That's right. Today, one of the biggest AquaTouch updates to ever come out is finally here, and I'm super excited. In fact, it is so big that if you don't absolutely smash the like button on this video, then the entire world is going to be destroyed. So that's right, we're going to go over everything you need to know with this update, all the awesome new stuff that the developer Yuiko brought to this version, and it's just really awesome, gets a huge recommendation for me. All right, so we jumped on over to the computer, and I just want to show you guys where you can pick up this new version of AquaTouch. It's on the Better Touch Tool forums. Uh, you should be able to see it in the setup and pre-sharing section and just click AquaTouch version 3.6 and it'll bring you right here. Pretty awesome features and there's some main stuff that I would like to go over with you guys. But just want to touch on a couple things before we jump into the actual preset. So the developer Yuiko is on Patreon. So if you'd like to support them, the first tier is three bucks and you get access to some betas uh, before everybody else does. So it'd be a great thing to help support the creator. They have definitely put in a ton of work into this, especially to bring it to this new version. It is really really good now the other thing i wanted to mention is they do have a aqua touch discord server now so if you want to join up on that i will have both of those links in the description for the discord and the patreon go check them out if you want to um, aside from those it's time to get into this review so working off that you can actually see that uh, the four main things right here are the increased efficiency 90% less buggy. There are some new features and many refinements. And honestly, I would say these are spot on. The bugs that I was experiencing when I originally downloaded AquaTouch uh, 3.5.7, I believe, it, they were all over the place. It was kind of, you didn't even know what was going on because it was so complex and there were bugs everywhere. Now, it is just in a really good spot. So arguably one of the most important changes that came to AquaTouch is it is a lot more efficient. There used to be a ton of Apple scripts that were running and Apple scripts don't really seem to be that efficient, but the developer Yuiko uh, changed all of that over from Apple scripts to JavaScript. So all the automation scripts that are running in the background are just a lot more efficient. You'll see I've been hovering between two and 4% usually on the CPU percentage. Like that is awesome. It has come down so much from the original, uh, when the original AquaTouch debuted. It used to be crazy inefficient and there were huge spikes. Now it's way under control and it's just gonna save you a ton of battery life. You might not even really notice much of a difference at all to be honest. So we got the touch bar simulator up now. I just want to show you what my favorite part of the new Aqua Touch is, and it is these uh, conditional activation groups. So basically prior, whenever you wanted to open these groups and you were on a specific website, whenever you switch to another website, this group would close. Now, when you open up the activation group and then you go switch, to another website, boom. The activation group for that specific website just opens right up. It The activation group stays open until you close it now. So if you wanna switch to whatever websites you want, it's always gonna be constantly changing to the correct one. And there was this big issue where if you wanna change apps completely, it just, it, it wouldn't really work. So, you know, if I want to like open up Adobe Audition and then I want to switch back, it still stays open. That is so amazing and such a huge change. Now, the next huge change to me at least is the Bluetooth widget. So now you don't have to just tap the quick settings menu. You can see right here that you get this new, new Bluetooth looking widget here. But if you wanna just open straight up to that, all you have to do is hold that, long press the quick settings, and it will bring you 
to this new Bluetooth widget connection system. And it is actually awesome. It is just super easy to set up. All you have to do is tap one of these buttons and you'll get a set up Bluetooth widget that opens up. And it's just really awesome, really simple. All you have to do is select what Bluetooth device you'd like to pair. And then I've already got my headphones, my AirPods connected. So now all I have to do is click the connect button. Oh. <laughs> it, it paired when I put them in my ears and then I clicked connect, but it's already disconnect. So now I'm connecting them. Boom. Awesome. It's so simple. You can see the percentage, a beautiful icon right there. And now you can see them just in the regular setup widget. If you don't want to long press this button, you can just click this three dots right here and it will open up the uh, Bluetooth connection system. It's just really, really awesome. And also just want to mention sidecar activation is now implemented and it's right here. So just a really nice touch to put in there. Another small touch that we got, the YouTube volume actually works perfectly now. I'll, uh, I'll turn this up so you can see. But before this never really worked very well, now it works perfectly. And this fix was also made in iTunes as well. It works perfectly. I can't really play any specific music because I'll get copyright striked, but for sure works great now. There was one quick thing that I did notice. If you go to unsupported apps, you are gonna wanna go to show better touch tool, touch bar and hide Mac OS control strip. Control strip, of course, unless you want the unsupported apps to show the default touch bar. But for me, um, I always prefer to have those gestures on the touch bar so I can do the volume and other stuff. I think it's supposed to be set up like this, but it gets reset sometimes and it's it's confusing, but try and change that. The other thing I will definitely recommend is going into the trackpad settings and adding in a couple trackpad gestures. And I've done these before. And the reason that I have been continuing to use them, not only are they super convenient, but when you're using AquaTouch, some of the apps use the default touch bar. And here's the issue with that. You can no longer do the touch bar gestures when you're on a default app or when you're on the default touch bar. And that is really bothersome to me. And it's no, there's nothing you can do about it. It's how the better touch tool is set up. You literally just can't do it when the default touch bar is out. So how do you get around that? You add trackpad gestures. So I actually have mine already made in my default preset, so I can just copy them and put them into the um, AquaTouch preset. So all you gotta do is copy them, and slap them, whoops, wrong, wrong place. All you gotta do is, nope, there we go. Slap them in there and you can delete those fake ones. And now I can use my trackpad to do the volume. And that is just like really nice. You don't have to rely on the touch bar if you're in an app that uses the default touch bar. I do have a video explaining in more depth how to do these exactly. I will link it in not only the comments, but I'll put a card up in the top corner. So go check that out if that's something that you're interested in. And lastly, I just want to say thank you to the developer, Yuiko. They put in a lot of time into this. You'll see here it says nine to five for two weeks, and that is no joke. Please, if you can, go support them. Join the Discord. You can help out there by naming some bugs that you find, uh, you know, giving feedback on all the different stuff. But that's really all I got for today. I think you'll really enjoy this update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like or the world's gonna be destroyed. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day.